Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. Today, I thought I would talk a little bit about surgical programming and uh, atomic commits, unit testing. Um, so, when I was at Apple, um, we would get this annual performance reviews where um, our manager and some of our peers that we could select ourselves uh, would give feedback on our work throughout the last year and uh, this uh, performance review would like drive stuff like your your promotions and your bonuses and whatever but I didn't really care so much about that I was more interested in the how am I doing part because <laughs> I was uh, I was always completely convinced they're like oh shit this is this is the year when when they finally tell me that I suck right <laughs> but I don't know that that never happened uh, instead, they always they always had these nice things to say, uh, which always surprised me. I guess that says something about me. But anyway, um, one thing that I was told in a performance review was that I am a very surgical programmer, which I really I, I really thought was such a nice compliment because I never uh, I never put into words uh, what I was trying to do, but that was a very good description of it. And I guess what it is about, or how I think about it, is that um, for any task that you set out to do, or for any bug that you're trying to fix, you work out uh, what is like what is the small bounding rect of this task, and then you slice perfectly around it. So, like when you're trying to fix a bug, then you isolate the bug and fix only the bug um, in the in this like the smallest most precise and correct way possible uh, and you don't get carried away with refactoring other things or, or like dragging other changes along with it um, I think uh, I think that's a very very good style of programming and it is very very uh, healthy uh, and especially in like longer living projects or projects with a lot of people on them because small changes are gold um, so, the habits that I try to maintain for programming in this way, um, I guess there, there's like one primary habit, really, which is uh, uh, the way that I do my commits, um, and that is that I always try to make very small atomic commits that um, have a single purpose, and you very rarely see me doing multiple things in one commit. Um, it's I, I try to keep it atomic, I guess, is a good word. And uh, and the the main way that that I do this or, or like stay honest with this is that before I commit anything, I always look at the diff. Um, maybe I forget once or twice every now and then, but uh, it it is a very serious habit to always look at the diff before you commit uh, and make like. Be honest with yourself. Like, does every line that you're changing actually belong in this commit? Um, and then, like, if you think about the commit message that you're gonna write, like, the commit message is is it gonna like match up with the changes that I'm making? Because uh, if it doesn't really, or like, if you're changing anything that's outside of the scope of the commit message, then really that should be a separate commit. Um, that's what I think. Like, I. And uh, yeah, so like, I guess my, my process is that like I look at the diff and then remove all the unnecessary uh, unrelated white space changes and like formatting changes, try to get rid of those. Because really, I, I really like it when um, you bring up the diff of a commit and it's like three red lines, four green lines or something like that. And that's it. Um, there's no like uh, red, green, red, green, red, green, little, um, tiny little changes around the document, like moving a semicolon here and, and whatever. Like, that stuff is so noisy and it's ugly and it's distracting. And it, um, it's just unpleasant to work with diffs like that. Um, there's, uh, there's some, there's something to be said for the aesthetics of, of, of a patch. I, um, I really like a beautiful patch, I guess. I also I also always call them patches, not like I would say patch review, not code review, because 
I like looking at patches. I don't. Code review is is different. Like uh, that's like uh, reading the whole thing, but patch review is like you're reading a change. Uh, that's that's what you end up doing most of the time, I think. So that's why I call it that. Anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked. Uh, so yeah, so um, making these very small, as small as possible, precise commits with precise commit messages that describe what's being changed and um, you're honest about it, you're not changing anything that you're not saying that you're changing and um, and I always try to stay within one subsystem for instance um, uh, that I wouldn't um, do like these cross-cutting changes unless I have to. So sometimes you're changing something that breaks another part of your code base uh, unless you update it like if you're changing an API or something like that and then that's when I think uh, cross cross directory uh, commits make sense, but otherwise I like to to try to do changes um, in very um, <laughs> very separated fashion. Um, and then another thing that really helps you develop in this way is uh, unit testing, and that's something that we're not where I would like to be with Serenity yet, obviously, because we only have uh, basic unit testing of the um, ACK uh, framework. But as we improve in this area, it's something that is going to make it easier uh, and more straightforward to program in this surgical manner. Uh, because um, in WebKit, we had this policy that whenever you're fixing a bug, your uh, patch should also include a test that fails without your fix and passes with your fix. And of course, that's not always possible or realistic to do that. But as a general rule, it made a lot of sense. And that's how WebKit has been able to accumulate like tens of thousands of tests, because <clears throat> people are always <clears throat> uh, making tests and adding new tests. And I would really like to get to a point where that's how we roll as well in Serenity, um, where when you're fixing a bug, then we would also include a test for that bug fix within reason, but still. Um, <clears throat> so, but we're not there yet, but I hope we can get there. Like now, when I'm fixing bugs in ACK, I try to include bug fixes, and that's going okay so far. And it's making the ACK tests directory grow slowly but steadily, and that's, that's really good. It makes me, um, like every time I add a test, I feel a little bit more confident about the quality of the project. So, once we get testing going in other subsystems, that's going to be really sweet. Anyways, um, this was supposed to be about surgical programming. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm always really happy when I get pull requests and I see other people programming in this way. Um, and I really like reading long commit messages, but I understand that like not every commit. Uh, is going to inspire you to write a long message. It certainly doesn't do that for me, so it's okay. But I think that um, we're in like a in a honeymoon period in the project still, where it's okay to write short commit messages. But we're eventually going to get to a point where they're going to get longer. Um, but we're still still in the good times when when we can be kind of chill about it. Um, but anyway, so I guess I should talk about one of the big benefits of, of uh, these small commits, this surgical style, because it's not just that it makes you feel good, it's also extremely helpful when you're um, doing like bisecting, for instance, because if you're bisecting your way to a test failure or some kind of regression point, it is very, very nice to end up um, with uh, Git bisect telling you like, okay, so this broke in this three line change here uh, with this test that shows what it was trying to achieve uh, compared to, oh, well, this broke here in this commit called fix stuff with 200 new files and 5,000 changes, right? Um, the, the difference is like night and day. And obviously, you want to be the guy who, who has to debug the three line change. So that's like, that's like the big, big benefit. But then there are also um, 
other benefits like makes code review so much easier and so much more pleasant um, and um, if you're including tests then it also increases the quality I think in a very measurable um, sort of quantifiable way it increases the quality of your project um, because one proof that some little thing is correct is I think that's like one unit of quality right uh, and that's the sort of how I think about it so we need to add more of those things um, yeah <laughs> I guess uh, I guess that's uh, those are some of my thoughts about that um, so if if you uh, send me patches and pull requests where you're changing a bunch of unrelated stuff I'm definitely gonna nag you about it um, I did put in the contribution guidelines for the project that um, uh, you should only change what you're saying that you're changing or something like that like don't I think it's in the do's and don'ts sections uh, like uh, like don't uh, change stuff outside the stated scope of the pull request it's basically what I've been trying to say here um, in a different way I think that's, that's a very healthy habit and uh, one that we should all be cultivating um, because the more the precise we are and the more um, specific we are about what we're doing the better understanding we will all have of the project that we are working on right so I'm about out of steam here so <laughs> I'm just gonna stop talking but uh, I would say thank you for hanging out with me on the commute and uh, if you have any topic suggestions or questions or anything I'll happily talk about anything so uh, leave a comment below, and I will see you next time. Bye.